Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Nancy Griffin with Contento Marketing, and I'm pleased to be moderating Derm Young's webinar series, The Untold Story of Skincare. This series, cons series consists of six sessions. In each session, we invite skincare experts with various backgrounds to discuss a topic of interest. If you like this webinar, please share it on your social media. And if you have any questions about this topic or any specific questions for the panelists, please feel free to send your questions to customer underscore service at dermyoung.com. Our topic today is self-care options for hand eczema. We know we've all stepped up our hand washing game these days and alcohol-based hand sanitizers have become part of our everyday life. As a result, many people are complaining about their dry, itchy hands. Today, our panelists, a, skincare science, a, 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 a skin scientist, a dermatologist, and an eczema sufferer uh, will uh, talk about whether these symptoms can lead to health concerns and advise on your best treatment options. Our panelists today are the founder and CEO of Derm Young, up there in the left-hand corner, Hello, uh, Dr. Yang Brooks. Um, Dr. Brooks is a skin biologist and former faculty in the de um, de dermatology department at Massachusetts General Hospital, which is the teaching department uh, for Harvard Medical School. Uh, and we have down in the bottom right-hand corner, uh, our second panelist, Dr. Serena Elmira, El Elmira, a board certified dermatologist at Mass General an assistant professor of dermatology at Harvard Medical School. Dr. El Mariah is also the senior clinical advisor for Derm Young. And then last but certainly not least, in the bottom left-hand corner there, we have Jason Jansma, a construction manager from Chicago, who's here to tell us about his fight with eczema. So let's get right into the meat of this. I, I'm gonna start um, by asking Dr. El Mariah uh, the dryness, itchiness, and inflammation that we are seeing in our hands, are, are those signs of eczema? And part two, are, are there any health concerns associated with those symptoms? Sure. So um, I think the, the most important thing to understand about hand eczema is that there can be many different causes. Uh, hand eczema is typically characterized by those uh, features or symptoms that you just described. Your skin can be very, can be dry, scaly, cracked, fissured, um, very, very itchy. It can also lead to burning or pain in the skin of the hands. Um, and very often, you know, regardless of whether you're itchy or in pain, it's, the experience is just very uncomfortable and it can, you know, it can impact uh, your your day to day function because it actually becomes difficult to to really uh, use your hands for anything whether it's typing or washing dishes or, or um, you know taking care of your day to day activities so uh, hand eczema as I said can be caused by many factors it can be caused by genetic or medical forms like atopic dermatitis which is a condition that you can uh, develop early on in life and then will manifest through your adulthood. Um, it can also be caused just by excessive uh, cycles of, uh, of wetting or washing your hands and then drying them, um, allowing the skin to become dry and cracked. And then it also can be caused by irritation, um, for example, from the alcohol-based sanitizers, as well as from um, allergies that you can develop. So whether you become allergic to fragrances or to preservatives that are in your soap or lotions or creams. So uh, you can get those types of skin manifestations of dry cracking, itch or redness um, in association with any of those conditions. And you know when you when you have dry or cracked skin, it not only leads to the symptoms of pain or itch, but it can also increase your risk of getting infections, whether they're bacterial or viral mm. um, infections in your skin. Um, it doesn't, you know, having a dry skin eczema due to excessive hand washing doesn't necessarily lead to developing atopic dermatitis or an allergic type of eczema. Um, but you can actually be at higher risk of developing sensitizations or allergies to some of the creams and lotions you use if your hands were already excessively dry and constantly exposed to them. So it is something to be, you know, on the lookout for and something to take very seriously. 
Well, I know we're all going to continue to be washing our hands and using sanitizers going forward. So if people have these symptoms, can they expect it to lead to long term, uh, a long term symptom and, and perhaps one of these skin diseases? Certainly, I think, you know, it is common for people who have chronic skin irritation. Um, you know, hands are, are one of the most common sites. So in this case, you know, you can, you can have like a long-term or chronic form, but as soon as you start to take care of your skin, it usually improves. If you, if you have chronic open wounds on your skin, as I said, um, previously, it is possible to get kind of longer term um, complications such as infections, but you're not going to go on if you never had atopic eczema, so like genetic eczema, you're not going to go on to develop it just because your, your hands are dry. Um, but certainly you can pick up sensitivities over time because if your skin barrier is altered, you can be um, you can, you can be uh, at higher risk of developing allergies to things that you might use, you know, in, a, in your, your common life. So, you know, a fragranced, a fragranced lotion that you might like may actually lead you to become um, allergic to it if your hands are constantly dry and cracked and you're putting it on all the time. Oh, that makes perfect sense. Well, speaking of the skin barrier, Dr. Brooks, you are an expert um, in skin science. I know you've done a lot of research on atopic dermatitis, um, which is eczema. Um, can you share with us some results of your studies? Yeah, I, yeah, of course. So uh, as Nancy mentioned, my research focused on atopic dermatitis, which is the most common form of eczema. So prior to our study, there were uh, several reports on what genes are commonly altered in eczema patients. Uh, among the list of the genes, one in particular, the aquaporin-3, caught our attention. So aquaporin-3 encodes a protein that transports water and the glycerol across cell membranes. Uh, many of you may not know, um, there is no blood vessel in our epidermis, the top layers of our skin. So how our epidermis gets water is not from the air, it's not from the skincare uh, product you put on your skin, but from the dermis. So aquaporin-3 is the water channel to pump the water from dermis into the epidermis. So in normal uh, condition, aquaporin-3 is expressed in the basal layer of your epidermis and a few layers up, uh, but never in the outermost of the uh, epidermis. However, in eczema patients, the aquaporin-3 is expressed across all the layers, especially the outermost layers of the epidermis. Uh, and this is thought to increase the water loss uh, in eczema patients, as you you know, it's manifested as dry patches, patches of dry skin in the uh, on the uh, on the body. So, um, well, in our study, we found out uh, the altered distribution and expression of aquaporin three actually contribute to the skin barrier damage. When it's overexpressed, several essential components of the skin barrier, such as the filigrane, the loricrine, um, have greatly reduced expression. So this makes the skin barrier more permeable and prone to infection, as Serena uh, mentioned. And also this um, aquaporin-3 abnormality actually triggered the increased in expression of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which contribute to the eczema development. So our study, together with many, many others, really um, confirmed and substantiated the two major contributing factor to eczema development. One is skin barrier damage, and the second is the chronic inflammation. It sounds like a vicious cycle, too. Yes. So, you know, the water loss, <laughs> the skin barrier damage makes skin prone to infection, so more cytokine is released, and all the cytokine will uh, create more damage to the skin uh, a barrier, so make a self-perpetuating uh, vicious cycle. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I see our lower left-hand panelist nodding his head a little bit that maybe he's <laughs> experienced some of this vicious cycle. So, Jason, can you tell us a little bit about um, your experience with eczema? Yeah, so I've had it my whole life. I, when it, my first memories of it really affecting my life was like junior high into high school. Um, I come from a blue collar family, so, you know, moisturizer wasn't something that was discussed <laughs> in my household. So I used to wash my face with a bar of soap and stuff. 
Um, and I would get like red sores on my cheeks, actually crusty like red sores. And my scalp was always a big issue. Um, so something I struggled with my whole life. Thankfully, I, I, my wife is in this industry. I went, when I got, <laughs> met her in 1997, it, my, my life kind of changed a little bit because she introduced me to like high quality moisturizers, stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, it's something, I, and it, it's especially uh, bad in the winter, obviously, uh, with the dry heat and everything. Um, and kind of with, to uh, what she was uh, elaborating on, I always thought I'd just put lotion on and moisturize it, it would be fine especially with my scalp, it, it never worked. It wasn't until I got actually medication, um, medicated uh, shampoo where my, my scalp actually finally started getting better. Um, but it, it's, it's, it's manageable now. Did you find that, um, that products with harsh ingredients or toxic ingredients, chemicals, artificial fragrance, those kind of things would, sure. would cause more problems? For sure. I saw a dermatologist when I was younger, and uh, that was the thing they, they said, avoid anything with extra fragrances. So everything I buy is fragrance-free, is as basic, as minimal as possible. Did you want to add something to that, Dr. Almira? Yeah, I was just saying that it's a very, um, you know, reasonable thing to do. We often, you know, recommend that uh, for people who have any type of inflammatory skin disease, but especially eczema. Uh, eczema, as um, Dr. Brooks was mentioning, is a very, um, it, you have a compromised skin barrier, but you also have this underlying inflammation that allows your immune system to pick on up on anything that is abnormal or really shouldn't be there. And so because of that, you are more likely to become allergic to it. But even if you don't become allergic to something, you could be very easily irritated by it. It can just make that inflammation work. So it really becomes this, this soup of different problems. And it can, as we, as Jason was mentioning, just become really a vicious cycle uh, where, you know, the, the inflammation causes you to, to scratch or pick or rub at the skin. And that then opens the barrier more leading to more inflammation. So really, even if you don't have genetic forms, like forms that start during childhood, like Jason's, um, you know, this, this cycle aspect to, to eczema and hand eczemas really can um, be a big problem for people. And they'll, they'll cycle through their many different types of fragrance products or pro products, even if they're not fragrance and have other preservatives in them that can, can trigger the same reaction. So it's, it's a very common experience and something that's important to try to limit those unnecessary items in the, in the topicals that you use. And even essential oils, which you would think would, would cause no problems. Yeah, I mean, essential oils are, are often um, some of the most potent irritants uh, because they're concentrated flavors, right? They're fragrances. So you have to be careful with the ones you choose because um, you can never really predict which one you as an individual are going to react to. Some people are going to react to cinnamons and other people are going to react to citrus and, you know, florals. And so in general, um, there are groups that are a bit more concerning, uh, like families of certain fragrances that are more concerning. So we try to, to steer people away from using those. But if you find there's something that you in, as an individual you use and it causes extra burning, irritation, um, or makes your skin worse, that's a sign you could be allergic to it and should stop it. Well, Dr. Elmariah, why we have you uh, on the spot here, let's talk about some solutions. We've talked about this being really detrimental to people's lives and, and uncomfortable and, and really hindering everyday life in a lot of ways. So what are, what are some of the things that people can do to treat this? So, um, you know, first and foremost, the fundamental principle in managing hand eczemas of any kind is hydrating your skin. So after you wash your hands, um, you want to thoroughly rinse them of, you know, any soap products that you have been using. Um, obviously, using soap products or detergents that are milder are always a little bit better. Um, but simply, you know, again, those milder means it doesn't have a lot of fragrances or unnecessary preservatives um, that they sometimes will have the indications for sensitive skin on them. Um, you could definitely, you know, use those. But once you're done, walk, you know, using the soap product, um, rinse your hands thoroughly for like a good 20 seconds or so. Once your hands are, once you're done washing, you want to dry them thoroughly as well, but immediately put on a, um, some type of emollient, okay? And in general, we like blander emollients. Um, ones, again, those are ones that aren't really heavily fragranced. 
we try to recommend, you know, and in general, I try to recommend um, creams uh, or, or, or ointments, which are a little bit on the greasy side, but those during the day make it a little bit hard to, to go around and touch things. So um, if your skin can tolerate a cream, if it doesn't cause stinging or burning, that's often a very good base. Sometimes even, you know, some people prefer oils, other people prefer lotions, whatever your skin can tolerate is what, and what you'll use is usually what I recommend, but in general, the blander, the, the, the better. Um, you know, if you're someone where that is insufficient, okay, um, and again, you can actually put lotions on and creams on even after you use a, a, an alcohol-based sanitizer as well. So hydrating is the number one thing. But once you've been doing that and you feel it's not really helping you enough and you're still getting redness, cracking, fissuring of the skin, that's when it's time to really consult a physician. Um, and we often rec will recommend topical steroids. Uh, those, the purpose of topical steroids or these medications are to decrease inflammation so that your skin has time to allow your natural barrier to heal, okay? Um, and, uh, and, and we typically will recommend a two to three week course for hands of a topical steroid. Um, the downside of topical steroids is that they actually can thin your skin over time. And so you have to be careful because if you use them chronically, you not only, can, um, they can thin your skin, but you can become tolerant to them. Well, they'll stop being effective for you. So uh, you have to be a little careful with that, but we really just say, you know, use it at, at your discretion and the discretion of a physician. And then there's similar medications that can be used kind of that are again, prescription based uh, that, that will treat inflammation from a different mechanism. There are items called um, calcineurin inhibitors or uh, like some people may have heard of topical tacrolimus or pimicrolimus. There are also these PDE4 inhibitors like crisabarol. These are all um, non-steroid preparations, but again, um, have some downsides to them in that they can cause stinging, they can cause irritation, um, but they, unlike steroids, can be used chronically. So there's really a number of things that we can use in our armamentarium as physicians to manage people, but you really have to see somebody to, to access those. Um, from an over-the-counter perspective, the best thing you can do is find something <coughs> you like that hydrates your skin. And then there are these items out there that actually have mild anti-inflammatory properties. And so you can learn about the product that you're using to see if any of them um, are you known or have shown in any way to reduce inflammation as well as just hydrating the skin. Well, <clears throat> I know that... Uh... Derm Young was developed for the face, uh, but I, I know it's developed a cult following with people that have eczema. And uh, Jason's gonna tell us a little bit about how he discovered the Derm Young products and how amazing they've been for him. Yeah, so uh, thankfully my, my mother-in-law uh, got involved with this company. I've, I've tried everything in the book. Uh, my wife's in the industry, so she's constantly giving me you know, whatever she can get her hands on a try. Uh, I've tried uh, all kinds of different oils. Even tried emu oil was, was suggested to me once, and all, all that did was made me break out. Um, but uh, I started since I started using the loom oil. Uh, another thing too with my beard, I like having a, a beard, and I usually once it gets close to this length, I have to end up shaving it. So I actually get sores right here and in my chin. The skin gets so dry and irritated, it actually turns into like a, a, a not even an itch. It's actually a sore. I can even touch it, and I can look, and the, and the skin's like red and raised. I always have to shave it so I can moisturize properly. Um, with the alum oil now, I put the droplet on and I drop it in the, in the hairs and in my, in my chin and I can like massage it in. Uh, every time after I shower, I it before, before I go to bed and let it sit. The sores are completely gone. There's no more irritation, it doesn't hurt. I can actually have my full beard now. Um, I don't even feel it on my face. It used to be a constant uh, itching and pain. Um, that, and like I said before, with my cheeks are always a problem area and my eyebrows. Again, it's easy to put the drop around there and get the oil in there, more so than, the, than, a, than a, a lotion. And it's a night and day difference. It's a, my, my, my face is completely the best it's ever been. So wow. I appreciate it. That's amazing. And I know that the, the product heals the skin from the inside out uh, and so much more than wrinkles. Uh, so I'd like to ask Dr. Brooks to tell us a little bit about how, why this is so powerful. Sure. Um, as I mentioned previously, um, there are two major contributing factors to the atopic dermatitis. One is the skin barrier damage, and then the other is the uh, uh, chronic inflammation. And that's what we address in our oil. 
So we suppress the coronary inflammation. You know, there are so many cytokines, but uh, eczema has its specific cytokines. So, you know, there are so many uh, products with uh, anti-inflammatory properties, but they are not, they may not be suppressing the right cytokine. Um, so accidentally and luckily, we, uh, we actually, what we put in our oil, the natural botanical extract paired with the oil happen to be able to um, help with that. And also at the same time, we, re we rebuild your barrier. There are a lot of barrier re uh, repair products on the market right now. Uh, what they do is they provide emollient and then some ceramide, um, hoping to, you know, uh, help with the symptoms. But what I like to describe that is to paint over the crack. They are not fixing the drywall. I think Jason knows that better than me. <laughs> paint something over the crack, you are not, the crack will show up once this barrier, uh, once this paint uh, peel off. So what we are doing is what our products are designed to activate the cells, you know, to uh, secrete all those um, skin barrier components to repair the wall themselves from inside out. That's why a lot of people see a um, result very fast and uh, gradually their skin will get better and better. Um, as Nancy mentioned, this product is meant for, you know, wrinkles, fine lines and the pigmentation, but we got so many off-label uses and so many stories from eczema uh, customers you know, the babies with eczema, you know, mommies don't want to put the hydrocortisone on the baby, so they use our oil, uh, toddlers, adults, um, you know, just a lot of success stories from our customers from the off-label use, yeah. With none of the side effects, it sounds like some of the medical things, like you were saying, Dr. Almaraya, the, uh, they can have some, some really um, nasty side effects. Right, so, we are different from the topical steroids or the other non-steroids topical um, drugs. So we are natural products. It's just the oil with some botanical extract. They are very carefully selected and we don't even have preservatives in this oil. So very safe to use um, even on the babies and some pregnant women use our oil to prevent the stretch marks. They're all safe to use in those scenarios too. Yeah. Wow, the miracle product. <laughs> I use it every day. Thank you. So uh, this has been some really great information, and I just wanted to um, spin around the circle of panelists. So I'll start with you, Dr. Almaraya, uh, for some final words and, and advice uh, that you might have for our, our viewers today. Yeah, so I think, you know, many of us, it's our first time encountering, you know, eczemas of any kind, hand eczemas, and as you had mentioned before, um, you know, we, Nancy, we, we, we can't avoid it. This is part of our new normal, right? So it's really behooves um, each one of us to find something that, um, and really a regimen that works for, for us as individuals uh, and works with our lifestyle in order to prevent these things. Because as we are, as we are um, you know, just going about our day-to-day -day lives, you really can't spend the time to be compromised, to have your hands compromised. And so I just suggest, again, finding an emollient that you like. Don't be afraid to try a few. You know, you might want to do a, like a little test spot in a few areas, make sure your skin tolerates something well. And then once you find what you like, definitely um, keep using it. And if you ever get to the point where your emollients, you know, are not helpful for you, then don't hesitate to also reach out to a physician because you know there are times where you need a little extra push, even if you have your day-to-day -day regimen. Yeah, once you start getting into that vicious cycle yeah. that, that you were talking about. Uh, so how about you, Jason? Yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm very grateful that I was introduced to this product. Uh, I wish it came in a bigger bottle. <laughs> so I got more of it. Um, but other than, yeah, it's again, thank you for, uh, for creating it. It's, uh, it's been a life changer for me. Yeah. And I guess uh, with, as far as the hands back to what you were saying, Dr. Elmaria, that when you get that barrier compromise, you're more vulnerable to pathogens. So as we move forward with this being the new normal, you, you have to be so concerned with protecting your skin barrier, uh, for, for health, for, for safety. 
going forward. So Dr. Brooks, uh, as the founder of Durham Young and um, uh, the, the hero to a lot of people whose skin has miraculously uh, changed for the better, can you give us some final words? Yeah, sure. Um, well, you know, uh, for people who find the emollient is not uh, enough for their hand, they can, they are welcome to give it a try to Dermion Illumini Oil. And right now, any order on Dermion website, you will get a complimentary Illumini Oil sample. And we recently donated $6,000 worth of oil to the Cerner Corporation campaign to give the first responders, the medical um, professionals, some tender loving care. And I mean, we are grateful for what they have done for us. So we are doing our best to give them some well-deserved protection. That's excellent. And also, um, the mask, can you tell us a little bit that if you wanted to add the mask to the oil? Yes, so if you have um, pretty bad hand eczema, uh, like already inflamed, red and uh, flaky, so what we would recommend you to do, you know, sometimes people are not so compliant with uh, using of um, moisturizer so just morning and night put the oil on it and then put a thin layer of the mask the next morning you will see a very quick turnover probably within a couple days how your eczema will reside yeah excellent thank you for sharing that well thank you for all uh, for joining us today and this is uh, the first part of a six-part series as we mentioned um, please visit our youtube channel derm young and we'll look forward to seeing you for the next session. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I think. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.